The impact of vaccination on an individual is well characterized. The antibodies you develop to the vaccine should protect you from infection by the live pathogen. And in general, the protective impact of vaccination at the population level is well characterized through the phenomenon of herd immunity, whereby having a large proportion of immune individuals in the population provides indirect protection for the remaining susceptibles by reducing the probability that they will come in contact with an infectious individual. However, the change in the rate of transmission and distribution of infection within the population as a consequence of vaccination can have a variety of impacts, not all of which are immediately intuitive. One important consequence of vaccination and herd immunity is that the overall force of infection, the per capita rate at which susceptible individuals contract infection, declines in the population. As the force of infection declines, the average amount of time until a new infection takes place increases, and as a consequence, the average age at which individuals become infected increases. For infections that produce more serious disease or have more significant complications in infants, this phenomenon can result in an even greater reduction of secondary complications than due to the reduction of cases alone. A recent study found that worldwide vaccination efforts led to a 66% reduction in measles cases from 2000 to 2010. However, over the same time, mortality due to measles was estimated to have declined by 74% because the average age at which children were infected with measles increased, and the rate of fatal complications due to measles infection declines precipitously in children greater than five years of age. The interaction between vaccination and the age of infection can lead to an increased rate of complications if the consequences of disease are more severe in older individuals. The most famous example of this phenomenon is seen in the complications associated with rubella or German measles infection. Rubella infections lead to a relatively minor fever and rash in infants and children. But if pregnant women are infected with rubella, they have an increased risk of a wide variety of birth defects collectively known as congenital rubella syndrome, or CRS. In an unvaccinated population, rubella infection is largely concentrated in infants, and it is rare that a woman would make it to reproductive age without having been previously infected and thus immune. In vaccinated populations, however, the overall prevalence of infection declines, and the probability of an unvaccinated woman making it to reproductive age without being exposed to rubella increases. Of course, if vaccination rates are very high, that is, near the critical herd immunity threshold, then rubella would likely go extinct in that population and infection would cease to be a significant concern. However, in between the point of vaccine introduction and local elimination, there is a risk that the incidence of CRS will increase as a consequence of vaccination. This has led to recommendations that rubella vaccination not be introduced into an area until immunization coverage of greater than 80% of the population can be guaranteed, at which point the expected benefits of rubella vaccination in terms of reduced childhood infection and reduction of CRS outweigh the potential risks of increasing the mean age of infection into high-risk ages. Not all pathogens or vaccines result in lifelong immunity. It is for this reason that we receive booster immunizations throughout our lives. Boosting is something that occurs naturally as well. If an, individually, if an individual is currently immune to a pathogen and is naturally exposed to that pathogen, their immune system will react in the same way as to a booster vaccine. Successful vaccination at the population level, however, reduces the incidence of infection in the population and the likelihood of an individual encountering a natural booster. This phenomenon has been implicated in the increased rates of infection with Bordetella pertussis, the bacterium that causes whooping cough in the US. As a consequence of successful childhood vaccination, the rate of re-exposure to Bordetella pertussis has declined, and it has been proposed that individuals are more likely to lose their immunity. If that happens, the next time they encounter Bordetella pertussis 
oftentimes in early adulthood, they will no longer be protected and will become infected again. Increased vaccination and the associated reduction of the prevalence of infection can lead to increased rates of local extinction of transmission due to random chance, that is, the chance that all infected individuals fail to contact and successfully transmit to a susceptible individual. In general, this is a good thing, as it accelerates the rate at which infection is eliminated from populations. However, this local extinction rarely happens everywhere all at once, and there is always the risk of reintroduction of infection from a population that still has endemic infection. The consequence of this dynamic is that the susceptible population may accumulate in populations following local extinction. Thus, subsequent outbreaks may occur if and when infection is reintroduced. Something that may be difficult to predict from year to year, and outbreaks may be larger than expected because the susceptible population grew during the time when infection was locally absent. Thus, while vaccination will necessarily reduce the long-term average number of infections, it can increase the variability in cases from year to year. The combination of both direct, that is, individual immunity, and indirect effects, such as herd immunity, means that the consequences of vaccination programs are not always straightforward to predict. Successful public health programs must attempt to anticipate these changes in transmission dynamics and make adjustments as necessary. For example, taking caution when introducing vaccines for pathogens that may have more severe consequences in adults, introducing booster vaccinations to maintain immunity in the absence of natural boosting, and increasing surveillance for outbreak detection following local elimination.